welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we have some NBA playoff props here for you guys as the playoffs roll on on a Monday night. A couple games to choose from on the slate. The Eastern Conference matchup there in the six versus three. The Nets are in Philadelphia once again. And then we've got the same six versus six versus three in the West there as the dubs are in Sacramento. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to that page. You can also check out the best bets video we have up for you guys uh, as we will continue to bring you these videos during throughout the NBA playoffs. Also head to the lines.com. Check out all the picks we're putting up there for you guys. And the odds finder tool is something you can use to make sure that you're getting the best odds available to you on all these bets and NBA playoff props. Running through how we did uh, on Friday night with those last two playing games, real quick, quick, I will say, Nate, we had a nice night there. Five and one on the evening, up a bunch of units. You had Vucevic and Bam combining for 21 boards, uh, and they got that pretty easily. SGA under 43 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for me. Uh, also, like that, he did not get 35 points uh, plus the win, which we just put a tiny little bit on, uh, at least I did because I thought maybe that that would I thought if they won that would be the case it was not the case uh you correctly also faded Ant there as we're continuing to wonder if he's even caring or trying anymore after that last game in the first round versus the Nuggets uh and then Kobe White which uh, I was really proud of there nine and a half points for him was even money also had four threes which was more than the two he needed to hit our over on that bet so feeling really good as we continue to roll on with these player props Nate let's throw it to you for your first one for tonight yeah, it's a head-to-head prop again. Been having good success with this, but this time it's not combined. It is hardened to have two more assists than Spencer Dinwiddie um, it, after game one, where Harden had 13 dimes, also 23 points, and was a plus 20. And Dinwiddie struggled a little bit, 14 points, seven assists, uh, four turnovers. Um, look, I mean, it, it, are the Nets going to hit threes? That's basically how Dinwiddie is going to rack up a bunch of assists. And Vegas expects them to not hit as many after going 13 for 29. That's 45% in game one there. They had 23 assists total as a team um, in 19 turnovers. That's troubling. Philly is ninth in three-point defense since the All-Star break. They're also fifth limiting assists to point guards. And Dinwiddie put up double-digit assists a lot against bad defenses or teams that had already thrown in the towel down the stretch. But when he played limiting teams like Minnesota held in the six, Orlando held in the five, you know, there are some spike games in terms of going low on that uh, because he's not necessarily as good of a threat to score inside. I mean, when you have a guy like Gobert or in this case Embiid patrolling the paint, um, you know, I also thought about Harden scoring a lot, five more points than Dinwiddie. But look, Harden, while Brooklyn has limited assists, we don't think of Harden as a guy who's a traditional point guard who's going to try to dime up in the traditional sense. So even if Philly does have regression shooting threes, I, I think James Harden still gets 10 assists because he's just going to be feeding Joel Embiid. That is one of the easiest assists you can get, especially with a home scorekeeper where he can just drop it off at the nail. And even if Embiid jab, jab shoots, they're going to be like, yep, that's still an assist. Um, and at home, he feeds more. His usage rate actually dropped 3%. In the, in the last couple, month and a half there at home, his points per game dropped five points to 16.3. He went out and did the scoring in game one to show that he can do that. Also got the dimes, but, you know, that will that will help loosen up the defense, make him more of a threat to score, which I just don't think Dinwiddie has that same kind of, you know, triple threat situation. I think he's very clearly a facilitator, and Philly should be able to guard him in that fashion. They held him the six dimes in February 11th when these guys played, and they held him the six dimes in game one. And I think Harden's a good bet for 10. Yeah, we were both trying to figure out how to bet Harden uh, in general. I mean, I liked him in in game one, which I would, I mean, we we didn't really get a chance to talk about it together on a video, so I didn't mention it, but I definitely liked his 20 and a half points in game one as well. I I do think he'll continue to have to score. I think Maxi had a bit of a, 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 not necessarily bad game, but he wasn't the, used nearly the same. I think Harden came out and, and obviously made clear that he was going to, to be putting up stats, points, and assists 
Um, and, and I continue to like both of them for him. And, and the best way to, to get some value to your point is, is that he'll probably have a better game than Dinwiddie, who, by the way, keeps popping off at the mouth, saying silly things that are just like pissing off old guys. Latest victim for him was Rick Fox on the Lakers, where he just started talking trash on him for some reason. Uh, be like, look, man, there's some guys that are going to get, you know, a lot more stats and some guys are going to be like the Rick Fox of the team. And then Rick Fox tweeted back at him like, uh, here's three of my rings that I have for being the best defender on the championship Lakers. But I don't know. Anyway, Dinwiddie uh, continuing to just open his mouth, but I don't like him nearly as much as I like Harden to get the assist. And, and I think one and a half is a pretty good bet, maybe 10 or 11 to like five or six, to be honest, for Mr. Dinwiddie there. So uh, I am going to talk about Malik Monk for a minute, and it's so fishy. I agree. You mentioned how you're not necess- he's not going to have 32 points again, and I would agree. Um, but I do think he's capable of getting 16 in this game, and, and the two and a half threes for him is a pretty good bet as well because of the juice you get at plus 145. The thing is, is like I'm not really talking about him in this way because of his ability to hit threes, to be honest with you. Like, he's a good three-point shooter. Um, he's as good as Kevin Huerta, to be honest. Like, it's not like Huerta's much worse than him uh, in any capacity. I think Monk gets gets minutes and, and is a good player uh, to score against the dubs because of his size and athleticism. Um, and you look at how he scored his points in that first game, and I think he's going to continue to do a lot more of that, which is getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line. I don't know if he'll get another 14 free throws like he got in this last game, but he's averaged seven free throws against this team when he's actually gotten minutes against them, dating all the way back to his last game uh, when he played on the Lakers and and he played uh, on a team that was, you know, it had Anthony Davis and, um, and Austin Reeves, but other than that, it wasn't really playing anybody else. I believe Stanley Johnson started in that game. Uh, but my point here is, is that it was a similar Kings team to the one he's facing here. And I think he's going to have similar usage to what he's had against them as of, uh, ex- uh to, against the um, the Dubs, rather, as of late. 21 and a half points against Golden State in those last five with a 25% usage rate, averaging 30 minutes. And I think that usage rate is so high because, like I said, he can attack the rim as, a, as an oversized guard who's very strong and athletic. He's getting to, into the paint. He's also getting points off of turnovers, seven of those last game, which the Dubs had 15. And to be honest, like that's right around being pretty good for them when they get up to about 17 is when you're like yeah this is the dubs and sometimes in the playoffs that they're capable of doing that so um the only time he went under this prop versus the dubs in his last five was when he only got 24 minutes in a game that didn't really matter um and i think a huge part of this is the minutes also that he's going to get taking those from starter keegan murray who maybe he'll continue to start so they can give the rook uh that kind of confidence that he's still a big part of this team but he only played 15 minutes in that series and did not not look uh, in that first game and did not look ready for this series so, you know, I think you're going to continue to get a lot of Malik Monk. I don't think there's anything to be said about, I mean, Keegan Murray probably is a better defender, to be honest, slightly better than Malik Monk at this point, even as a rook. Um, surprisingly good at like blocking shots for, for his someone his size, but uh, I don't think they care about that here in SAC. They just won 126-123, and I think they know that their bread and butter is outscoring the other team, and they're going to need to do that. Uh, Malik Monk gives them the best sh- chance of doing that, uh, and he's hit three threes in three of his last four games when he's getting at least 29 minutes. Uh, so I think he's going to continue to get that. He shot 50%, hitting two of four last ones. So it's a little bit of a bet. I, I'm not as confident as I am in that one as the 15 and a half points, but I really like the 15 and a half points if he's going to get at least 30 minutes in this one. Yeah, I don't think it's fishy at all. I think you're you're going to follow the minutes here, and Keegan Murray is not going to play much in this series. And then if you're going to try to play both Monk and Huerta, I think you got to lean Monk uh, more for his defensive prowess than 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 Huerta. I mean, Huerta is going to be a liability on that other end. So I think, yeah, he's looking at close to 30 minutes. And as a per 36 guy, for sure, 16 points, three threes at, at the juice there. Uh, I think both are fine. I, yeah, I just wouldn't chase 30 <laughs> points again. And that's why I don't think the Kings are going to be able to, to come back well, and win. Let me ask, stretch. what, do you, what uh, do you think about uh, 20 points as the alternate total for Malik Monk? That does get you up to like plus 260. I don't know if you want the juice there. I know you're slightly risk averse, but maybe a little bit on him to actually get 20. Yeah, I would sprinkle some on that and probably try to cover your bases by just taking the yeah. normal prop. Um, and then, yeah, you could break even if he's got 18, which is where I would project yeah. probably. Harrison Barnes uh, for five rebounds is where I'm going here <clears throat> with the second pick. Uh, plus 102 at FanDuel. And you could put a half unit on that, I think, because it's just, you know, rebounds are always a little bit random here. But he's going to play a lot in this series. He played 36 minutes in game one, um, had seven boards. And look, per 36 guy, he's averaging nearly six rebounds a game, about 5.7 in his career. He's the most 
experienced playoff guy on this Kings roster, having played 64 playoff games with the Warriors, averaged just over five boards per game. So he's right there. And in this matchup, like the Warriors are doing everything they can to keep DeMontis Sabonis off the glass. And they he still got 16 boards in that last game. I expect him to get even more box box out energy from Draymond and Looney and and Barnes has got to step up like we've seen him shy away and be like I'm a small forward right like no on this team you got to come in you got to board uh especially against the Warriors who are going to be aggressive here in game two that offense does regress for the Warriors on the road they shoot 38 percent from three versus 41 at home they're averaging near allowing about 10 boards to power forwards on the season so that kind of fits into that mold where uh, Barnes is going to come. I have to come down and help out. Like he does only average under four boards per game in 33 minutes at home since February 1st. But I, I think this game, I am again, leaning under on 240. I think there will be more defense played, more rebounds to come around and, and just get a little bit tougher. And you're going to have to show your playoff acumen for, for Sacramento. And he's really the only guy with a resume on this team. And that means, you know, getting some boards and mixing it up. With your old uh, running mate, Draymond. Yeah, I, I looked at the same thing. We talked about it. And, and honestly, like I, I was looking at Trey Lyles as well um, because Trey Lyles is, is going to get some time too. I was just thinking who's going to be, you know, the, the, the playing power forward alongside DeMontis Bonus because that person is going to be ripe for rebounds. And both of these guys, you can make a case for uh, Trey Lyles is also at four and a half boards. He got six last game and he only played 18 minutes. Um, had a really, really good game. I think he'll continue to be a really good, uh, you know, asset for them. And, and anybody that they stick into that four spot is probably going to have a solid game because DeMontis is going to be boxing out two dudes at once every single time. Still managed to get 16 rebounds, which is insane. Uh, and the offensive rebounds are going to continue to be available for this team. So anybody who wants to go ahead and crash and get offensive boards, um, you're going to be welcome to, uh, you know, after you get past Draymond and Looney. Obviously, Wiggs can get in there. Only play 28 minutes. I think he's going to go up in time. So maybe that helps the rebound. Rebounding, but I still think I'd rather have Harry B or Trey Lyles trying to rebound uh, over Andrew Wiggins, to be honest with you, even though Wiggs has played really well, obviously, in the playoffs. But we'll see what happens there. My, my next bet to finish things off, Nate, is actually kind of relevant to this one, which is Day Day. Draymond Green, and I'm going under on the points for Day Day because... I he just hasn't done it, uh, and I, I don't think he's going to continue. I think he's going to continue to not be able to score, essentially, uh, against this team. His last six versus sack, six and a half points per game in 32 minutes. He hit this prop once. Uh, that was at home, and in four games on the road, he's averaging five points in 32 minutes uh, because he doesn't get more than about a 12% usage rate. Uh, he's not, obviously, ending any of these possessions. He's not the focal point or, or the person that they're looking to have shoot the ball, and he's only put he only put up five field goal attempts in that last game did have uh, four points because he also had two free throws that he made, which is a, a rarity that he would make both of them. So I wouldn't even count on, on one of those points being there for next game. But in uh, in that last game, like I said, four points in 34 minutes with that 10% usage and Wiggs played 28 minutes off the bench and, and they need him to basically play 33 to 34 uh, and be the guy that he was in the playoffs last year. If they have a shot at going back to the, to the, to the finals, which is what I'm not necessarily banking on and why I'm not necessarily feeling as good about the dubs being able to make it back there. So his last seven, uh, Overall, including this last game, Draymond went over this eight and a half points one time. Um, and that was, uh, excuse me, twice. And one of them was against the G League Portland Trailblazers. Uh, and then the other team was OKC, where he had uh, all of his, or six of his points, uh, six of his nine points were second chance points because OKC is such a bad rebounding team. Uh, but this Sacramento Kings team is a top 10 rebounding team in terms of limiting uh, rebounds to their opponents, even though they're playing at a blistering fast pace. So uh, there's, there's just not really opportunity for uh, Draymond to get you know, second chance points and put them back up for easy buckets. And so I just don't trust him to be able to score. I'm considering going over on the seven and a half rebounds. Cause he, you know, I, I still think he's going to be out there so much. And, and one of the two guys that need to get boards, but I don't, it's one of it's minus one Oh two, you know, he had nine last game and I still think he's capable of getting eight this game for sure. Um, but I just, I'm not, quite as confident in that one as the eight and a half. So I think I would still stick with, with the points as my, my preferred bet for him and, and under those for, to be clear. Yeah, I would agree under on the points. Cause he's just not even looking to score. And it's not like the Kings are going to funnel him uh, to the basket. They're, I mean, they're going to give up assists, which is why I talk about in the game theory and, and why I like Draymond eight assists in a same game parlay with some other stuff, because this is a really bad half court defense from the Kings and, and, and Draymond when, when the Warriors are at their best, he's 
mostly just facilitating from, from the elbow, you know, as a passer and, and they're getting open looks. And so I do expect them to go over on rebounds and assists. I think you can combine those. We've seen that in the playoffs last year after a loss. He definitely steps up in that realm. Might step up in points, which he did after a loss sometimes. But yeah, I think not five times out of six, he's probably going to not look to score and he's not going to get over. Yeah, not not with five shot attempts. Uh, I don't think he's going to get eight points. So that is all the time we have for you in our props video today. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. Check out the best bets video we have for you as well. And until we see you next, happy betting. 